don't believe in forgery, we don't believe in fraud, we don't believe in lying in the name of God. We don't like broken promises with a wink and with a nod. What are we for? What are we for? When it's all said and done, if you're not for the 99, then you are for then you are for the one. Uh, my name is Carrie Coe. I'm here with the uh, Oregon Fair Trade Campaign, and I've been involved with the Occupy movement since before it was the camp here at the squares. And uh, we're here today having this press conference to share uh, a few, two letters uh, that have been circulating around the community in support of the occupation and to urge the, the mayor to reconsider eviction of the camps. Um, I wanted to share a couple of things about the letter before we get into the speakers for today's press conference. Um, so Occupy Portland is a relatively new movement. Uh, we had our one month anniversary recently. However, it has deep roots in the social justice community here in Portland and around the nation. And the out pouring of support that we've seen from labor organizations, from community organizations, from the faith community and beyond veterans groups shows that Occupy Portland runs deep in this community and is well supported. A few things from the letter to highlight for you. That the community says that as, an organi as organizations advocating for economic and social justice, we owe the men, women, and youth of this movement a great deal of gratitude for the tremendous shift that they have created in the national debate. After years of effort, the nation is finally beginning to consider the root causes of the nation's economic woes rather than seek out scapegoats. This positive momentum must be continued. The organizations of this community have poured out uh, today in support of this and will continue to do over the weekend. Already there are over 30 individuals from organizations around the community and groups signed on to this one particular letter, not to mention the other letter that we have circulating. So um, the most important point that I think folks are trying to get across today is that we, we know that Occupy will live beyond these camps, but that organizations recognize that bringing to light the problems that poverty causes in our communities, as these camps have done, is not a reason to shut down the camp. It's a reason to address those issues. And we, uh, and folks feel like the mayor should be looking at those root cause issues and um, reconsider evicting the camp. Thanks, everybody. My name is Steve Hughes. I'm the state director of the Oregon Working Families Party. We are a grassroots, independent political party focused on the issues of good jobs, good schools, health care for everyone, and giving working people a voice in our political system because all too often the 99% are shut out of the halls of power where the decisions are made. I'm here today to say that while we're not here to speak on behalf of Occupy Portland, we are here to say that Occupy Portland speaks for us. They have been giving voice to issues that have been going on in silence, on the streets, in our, around our kitchen tables, issues of concern for people, average working people, returning veterans, people who are struggling to put food on the table. These issues of poverty, of the war on the working class, are not gonna go away if this camp goes away. They will be here tomorrow and the next day and we need to keep speaking out for them. So we are here because we are thankful to the work and the courage of the people in the encampment for all they have done to raise these issues, to raise the consciousness of the public and to change the debate in our country. We are thankful for them and we would like to turn it over to a couple speakers who are here to speak from each of their perspectives about why they are supporting this important movement that's going on all across the state, all across the country, and internationally. And so we're going to pass it off to them. Our first speaker tonight uh, is Dan Shea. He's representing Veterans for Peace. Uh, one of the things that we need to think about is today. Uh, it's the 11th day. This is uh, the 11th month, and this is uh, uh, Veterans Day for many of you. But for us, Veterans for Peace, it's Armistice Day. It's a time in which we remember those people who died in the wars in uh, in the First World War and all those wars thereafter. But Armistice Day was the 
uh, the signing of Armistice, a peace treaty that began to say that this was the end of all wars. Well, that hasn't happened. And one of the things that, that we try to do is we had a celebration this morning at Pioneer Square to talk about that, and the issue of the occupation came up. Veterans for Peace has been a supporter of the occupation movement all across this country. Many of our members are in the forefront. Many of them have been arrested and, and are still in the forefront. And what happened in Oakland uh, when uh, uh, Scott Olson was injured, seriously injured, Marines came out to defend the occupation there when the eviction took place. Here we are calling all veterans to come out and support this occupation. One of the things I noticed in the, uh, uh, about this eviction is that the city you know, has been very grateful and saying that uh, they've been very uh, uh, good about not get, being violent in the very beginning. Uh, with the occupiers, but as you see the police is building up all around the camps right now and one of the things that and that's what happens in every one of these cities that's happened and when they begin to decide that the state is going to shut this down or the city is going to shut this down we have to ask why they said that there was that there has been violence in the camp yes but there is violence all across the city there was a person who uh, OD'd recently well people are OD'ing across all over the city because of drugs uh, many of the veterans who come back from these wars can find only one way to self-medicate. They are oftentimes the ones that are ending up on the streets and we're supposed to be taking care of those veterans. Many of our social services have, been, have lost money and support so that they can't take care of these people. Well that person that OD uh, uh, and other people that were OD, their lives were saved because there was a medical tent there in the occupation. People that are hungry that didn't have food found food here in the occupation. So the occupation has been trying to to lift people up that are on the, the lowest levels at the same time bringing the issues that are most important. What has the city done? Not what are the occupiers doing to create more safety. What has the city done to create more safety? What are they going to do when we're talking about idle land that's standing uh, idle and <clears throat> for years and there are people that are being foreclosed on? It's an opportunity for the city to say we know what your demands are. We don't have to tell what the demands are. They already know. They've known from year after year after year over protest over protest over protest on the economic disparities in this country. They know what to do. So we don't have to tell them what our demands are. They already know it. They need to do something about it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Reverend Kate Lohr. I'm the Social Justice Minister at First Unitarian. And I'm standing here with Reverend Chuck Cooper, who is a United Church of Christ uh, minister as well here in Portland. And we have uh, been working with the clergy in town because, of course, the clergy are concerned about what's happening. So I just want to uh, mention three points, and then I'll turn it over to Chuck. First off, there has been much concern about some of the unsavory things that have happened in the camp. And I want you to know that the clergy in this town and the, all the members of Occupy share that concern. We also remind our fellow Portlanders that these issues exist on the street by default. Because this is a grassroots movement, we have simply pushed those issues into the public eye. Secondly, I want to make sure you all know that by defini definition, if someone is engaging in violent behavior, they are by definition not part of the Occupy movement. Yes. Nonviolence is and always has been a central value of the Occupy movement. Amen. And lastly, what I'd like to see the press do is to help engage the, the public on the salient question of how can we address the human need that has been made all too clear? And in a larger sense, how do we address the inequity that's at the root of so much of this nation's suffering? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Reverend uh, Chuck Curry. I'm a minister with the United Church of Christ, and I'm glad to be here and uh, to stand once again in support of Occupy Portland. Uh, the issues that Occupy Portland have raised are issues of great concern uh, to the church. They are issues about how we build up the beloved community, how we take care of the least of these, how we reach out to those who are our brothers and our sisters. We need to make sure that what happened in Oakland does not happen in Portland tomorrow night. So we call on the Portland police to act with nonviolence and to act with restraint. Reverend Lohr and myself will be spending tomorrow night here at Occupy Portland. We will spend the night here with the protesters. 
uh, to bear witness uh, to the events that occur and to draw attention to any acts of violence um, that are perpetrated against the protesters. We also call on the protesters to continue their nonviolence. We are deeply, deeply proud of the record uh, that they have achieved during the last month. The issues that they have brought up and the record of nonviolence they have achieved. This is the kind of protest that Martin Luther King would be proud of and it is a kind of protest that the church can stand up and say that we can be proud to support. So we, we thank them and we look forward to standing with them what we know will be a difficult night tomorrow night. Our next speaker is uh, Farrell Rickarts from Laborers Local 483, the union that represents some of the employees that work for the city of Portland. My name is Farrell Richards. I work for Laborers Local 483, which represents the municipal employees of the city of Portland, which includes the workers who take care of the parks here in Portland, who take care of the streets here in Portland, the sewers, we work at the ports, we work all over the city, we work at the zoo. Nobody can hear you loud. We really can't hear you. Terry O'Sullivan, who's the president of Layuna International, Laborers International Union of North America, said in a statement at the end of September of this year, the workers who build America, the half million men and women of Layuna, are united behind the fight against corporate tyranny and for economic prosperity for all and stands with the Occupy Wall Street movement in New York City and across the United States. Here in Portland, the executive board of Laborers Local 483 issued a letter in support of the Occupy movement we stand behind that support. It's also important to note that the mayor has advocated a $16.2 million cut to the Maintenance Bureau, which is services that the city of Portland depends on. Your streets, your sewers, public services. That are, the streets are a matter of public safety. And he's talking about cutting services and take care of those streets. He's talking about increasing your costs. He's talking about putting people out of work, anywhere from 100 to 200 people in my bureau alone. So he's going to increase unemployment while we've got people here who are unemployed and suffering. And I don't think that's right, and I think we need to be talking about that and fighting back against that. Next to speak is Kathy Hyatt of the Portland Law Collective. My name is Kathy Hyatt. I'm Portland co-chair of the National Lawyers Guild. Um, the National Lawyers Guild in Portland, Oregon, in Portland, Maine, in big cities and small towns all across the country is doing everything it can to provide legal support to the Occupy movement. We are doing this because we are deeply excited about Occupy's exercise of its First Amendment rights. We believe that the First Amendment protects more than your right to hold up a sign for a while and go home. The First Amendment protects the right to engage in vigorous, creative, effective dissent. Creative, effective dissent is a proud American tradition, a tradition that predates even the First Amendment. It's why so many of us have the vote. It's why we have weekends. It has ended one era of gross inequity and wealth, and we believe that it can end another, and we are very excited to do whatever we can to support that movement, whatever direction it takes. The final speaker is uh, Heather Conroy, the executive director of SEIU Local 503. Hello. Over the last couple of months, the Occupy movement has captured the attention of the country and brought attention to the economic disparity in this country. It gives hope to all of us who've been fighting for social and economic justice for so long. We're proud of their courageous work to stand up against the corporations who wrecked this economy and trashed the lives of millions of working families across the country and here in Oregon. That's why today I stand proud in solidarity with the Occupy movement and I call on the city of Portland to find a peaceful alternative to a forced eviction and to restrain from violence. Thank you. I'd love to thank everybody for coming and thank all of our speakers. The community has an outpouring of support for Occupy Portland. And we would also like to announce that tomorrow, uh, Saturday at 645, Labor will be gathering at 3rd and Main to show their support on the streets for Occupy Portland as the threat of eviction inches closer that evening. And we invite everyone from Labor, community, activists, uh, families to come out and join us. There will be food and music and uh, we'll continue the fight right there and uh, enjoy the night together. I'd like to add one more thing. I, I heard that uh, right now we have people coming up from San Francisco to be here to support this occupation and people coming down from Seattle. Uh, a number of veterans have already showed up on, in the camps. We're 
planning to be here uh, to stop this eviction. We stand by the occupiers and uh, veterans across the country are supporting this movement.